Good afternoon, everyone. The Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs reports that as of last night, some 80,000 people have been displaced from Rafah since Tuesday, when the Israeli military's ground operation there began. Most of those displaced people are seeking safety in Khan Yunus and Deir al-Bala. These areas lack the basic services needed to support civilians who need food, shelter, and health care. No humanitarian assistance or the fuel to power our aid operations has been able to enter through the Rafah crossing in recent days. The World Food Program reports that its main warehouse in Gaza is now inaccessible. It says that only one bakery is still working and that supplies of food and fuel are running out. Without them, WFP says its operations will come to a standstill. The UN Relief and Works Agency in Gaza says that some hospitals will start shutting down their generators in three days if we don't get fuel in. UNRWA says that as of today, its facilities are down to almost no fuel, rationing the small amount that is still in place in Gaza. As we told you yesterday, we continue to engage with all involved on the resumption of the entry of goods, including fuel, and so that we can again begin managing incoming supplies. Uh, yesterday, OCHA, alongside UNRWA, the UN Mine Action Service, and the UN Department of Safety and Security, were at the Kerem Shalom and Rafah crossings to assess the security situation. The area is highly militarized, making it impossible for organizations to distribute at the scale they previously did. The situation remains extremely fluid, and we continue to confront a range of challenges and acti amid active hostilities. Meanwhile, debris on the roads has made these routes impassable for the time being. We're exploring alternative solutions, including use of the fence road or other routes. The daily exchanges of fire across the blue line are deeply concerning, profoundly impacting towns and villages on both sides. Many people have been displaced, injured, and killed, including today. The United Nations Interim Force in Lebanon is working continuously to decrease tensions with hundreds of daily activities aimed at de-escalating situations and assisting local communities within its mandate. The ultimate solution can only be political and diplomatic. We urge all parties to reaffirm their commitment to the cessation of hostilities and to upholding their obligation under Resolution 1701. I was in touch with someone who's on the ground in Rafa uh, just over the past hour uh, who talked about how there has been uh, uh, n not uh, ground operations nearby, but shelling nearby in, in different parts of Rafa. That uh, is what has been leading uh, to uh, the displacement of people. I, I said, uh, just as you were coming in, that uh, something on the order of 80,000 people have left Rafa for, uh, for uh, surrounding areas. Uh, at this stage, uh, that, fig that number is increasing by the hour, and we could be close to about 100,000 by now. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's a lot of worry, there's a lot of tension, and, and yes, uh, there, has been, uh, uh, there have been uh, different strikes uh, in, uh, in, in and around that area. Um, regarding uh, your first question, uh, I mean, we've made clear what, what our points are in terms of uh, the problems having to do with fighting in the area, uh, the, the bad condition of roads, uh, the, you know, the, the, the difficulties we're encountering simply trying to get aid. One of the things that's important to point out is uh, that what we, are, what, we are re what we are reiterating to the parties is that their obligation to facilitate humanitarian aid doesn't end at the border or at the drop-off zone. That their responsibility uh, continues because aid has to safely reach the people who need it. So simply mm -hmm. dropping it off at a place is, is not sufficient. Uh, it's certainly not sufficient, for example, for our truck drivers who are operating under extremely uh, tense circumstances uh, and unsafe circumstances as they try to load trucks and, and get them to other places. And of course, uh, f for us as well, there's the added problem of the lack of fuel necessary to, to actually uh, go to different locations throughout Gaza. Uh, we are uh, continuing uh, those discussions. So those are ongoing. Uh, we hope to be ready. Uh, whenever aid uh, arrives uh, at the pier, uh, but uh, certainly the World Food Program stands ready uh, to distribute aid uh, if and when uh, you have uh, 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 a, a drop-off of aid at the pier, and uh, once there's an agreement on how it will how it will travel.
we're trying as best as we can to deliver aid. We're hopeful that in the next day or so we can get actually fuel coming in through one of the crossing points, but we're, we're not at that point yet. Uh, obviously, there's different things we need uh, uh, with security and fuel now being at the top of our concerns, but, but we are working with the relevant authorities and, uh, and we'll try to get uh, uh, things moving as quickly as we can. Ultimately, the people who need our help, they, they can't wait. I mean, th there, there are difficulties. I, I, like I said, uh, uh, we had people assessing the situation on the ground, and, uh, and I just told you what, what, their, um, what their assessments w were. Uh, I mean, basically, uh, the, besides, uh, and of course, besides the, the lack of, of fuel, we need to make sure that security and logistical con conditions around the Kerem Shalom crossing uh, uh, allow for a consistent daily flow of supplies into Gaza. Right now, it's a militarized, militarized zone. Roads are unsafe. Uh, security uh, uh, accidents have affected commercial transport, and uh, and of course, uh, and of course, uh, the lack of fuel adds to all of those problems. Uh, there, there is a hope that we can get some fuel in uh, over the next day, but obviously, we have to see whether that will actually happen or not. Through Karim Shalom. Uh, it, possibly through the areas crossing, possibly through a different crossing. I mean, there, there, there are many ways to get aid into Gaza if there's a will from the various parties to allow it. And one last thing. From my experience, sometimes the political moves always connects with uh, ground operations. Do you worry the ESS tomorrow would prompt the Rafah operation, ground operation? Uh, we'll have to see what tomorrow brings, obviously. Uh, yes. Uh, Farhan, so basically the Wafa news agency, the Palestinian news agency, uh, cited the UNRWA saying that 100,000 people in Rafa were ordered to leave, to move to eastern Rafa by the Israelis. Uh, I'm, I'm not aware of, of that. Obviously, uh, there have been uh, different messages coming out from the Israeli side. Uh, from our standpoint, people need to be able to stay into places where they feel safe. Uh, they shouldn't have to leave, but also, of course, from our standpoint, uh, no part of Gaza is safe. So, uh, so the warnings that we made at the start of this briefing are, are where we stand. Uh, Ibtisam. Um, Farhan, I want to follow up on uh, this point because actually, on Gabriel's point, because actually yesterday Stefan and Ocha representative did say that uh, the people were forcibly displaced. And also we have pictures for days now uh, showing that the Israelis um, give orders to the population in Rafah in some areas to leave uh, the areas to places where actually there is no water, no electricity, etc. So to say, so I found it a little bit striking that you are taking this back. Is it just? Uh, well, I'm not, I'm not taking it back so much as saying of some some of the departures in recent hours. It's difficult for me to determine at this point why they're going where they're going. So I can't. I'm not going to make a blanket categorical statement. Beyond that, when we say forced displacement. We're talking about involuntary displacement, people having to move, people having to move because they're compelled to do so. So obviously, if they're moving from fear, that is also counts as forced displacement. International law requires that any evacuation orders must be done lawfully, which means having key safeguards in place. We have said repeatedly that under international law, civilians must be protected and have their basic needs met, where, whether they move or stay. Those who are ordered to evacuate must have enough time to do so as well as a safe route and safe place to go, and they must be guaranteed the right to voluntarily return as international law demands. I have another question on uh, um, the Israeli authorities demolished, uh, I think yesterday or maybe today, um, um, houses of uh, Bedouins in uh, the Naqab area in uh, South Israel. They are Palestinian citizens of Israel. Uh, do you and uh, made more than 400 people a uh, homeless? Do you have any comments on that? Uh, yes, uh, the special coordinator's office will be following up, but obviously we stand against uh, uh, the demolition of homes if it's done in, uh, improperly. Uh, Sharife, um, I'm going to go back to the forced displacement because I have difficulty understanding. 
Um, how do you define the forced displacement that is the war crime? I mean, which one is the war crime? When is it a war crime? Uh, war, war crimes are those that, that are, de are determined by legal bodies. They're, they're not certainly going to be determined by me here at this podium. Uh, but regarding uh, forced displacement, uh, it, uh, the definition I just read out to you is, is where we stand on it. But I mean, how, <clears throat> okay, the courts are going to decide if something is a war crime or not. But if the UN is saying there is forced displacement, isn't that a war crime? Isn't forced displacement a war crime? I mean, uh, I think you can read international law as well as I can, but it is not for me to say uh, whether uh, this or that act that is that is happening is a war crime. That will need to be determined but, by a court. But you can call it a forced displacement. Uh, Would you call it a forced displacement? Because uh, under, I think, how the UN def defines it, it's that it occurs when individuals and communities have been forced or obliged to flee or leave their homes as a result or in order to avoid conflict or in situations of armed conflict. Yeah. So, so this is the UN definition of yes. war crime. And, 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 you, I mean, and, and you can see forced how, displacement. And you can see how what's happening today meets that definition. Thank you. Yes, uh, Dulce. Yeah, just a few uh, more Gaza questions. Uh, so you mentioned the Eris crossing. Is that inactive or active? Uh, we're, we're, we're discussing trying to see what we can do. I believe that uh, that goods have intermittently been passing through the Eris crossing. I don't know what the status is of it today. Okay. And then uh, Samantha Power put out a readout of her phone call with uh, Guterres yesterday. Uh, she didn't say anything about the uh, U.S.-led peer, at least it was not in the readout. Did she discuss that with the Secretary General? Uh, the Secretary General has discussed the, the peer with many different officials. Uh, I wouldn't have, uh, I, I don't have a readout of that particular phone call to share with you. But certainly the Secretary General and, of course, Sigrid Kag have been discussing with a number of governments uh, okay. how the peer fits in. Then, uh, that uh, the fact that the WFP is, is uh, scheduled to pick up the goods from this drop zone off the uh, causeway, presumably they would get fuel prioritized? Uh, <laughs> let, let's, let's see what the, what the coming days bring about that. We're, we're trying to get fuel in. Uh, so yesterday there was a lot of statements about uh, the, the uh, Karim Shalom crossing. There were reports in Israel of shooting, uh, uh, Hamas shooting at, at the crossing yesterday. And uh, today, Kogat uh, published uh, videos of trucks going on through Karim Shalom. Uh, what is the status as far as you're concerned? Uh, I'm not going to repeat all the things I said no, uh, prior. No, of course but, not. I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, uh, the, the, the short answer is that we're in touch uh, with the authorities. We've, uh, we've talked about what the problems are getting of, uh, aid uh, through Kerem Shalom. We want to make sure that, uh, that the responsibilities don't end simply with a drop-off of aid, but that we can ensure that aid can go to the people who need it. So once it gets to the drop-off point, it continues to be safe for them to go on forward from there. When you say ensure, ensure with Hamas, with Israel? Uh, with all of the relevant authorities. And, uh, and of course, regarding Hamas, we, we've made it clear that uh, we want to make sure that, uh, that uh, they don't attack uh, the, the, the entry points for I'm humanitarian sorry, where did aid. you make that clear? What? Where did you make that clear? In, I mean, because in, in, uh, in, in the statement that, that this, I, the, when, when the Secretary General was here two days ago, he basically urged Israel to open the Kerem Shalom crossing a day after it was closed because of Hamas shooting. He didn't mention Hamas. We have made it clear to, to all of our counterparts on the ground, including those uh, from the de facto authorities. Ah, but not uh, publicly. What? But not publicly. Am I not public? Now you are, but I'm saying that before you did, you said we've made it clear, have. Yes, and, 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 and past tense. we, as in people like myself and Stefan, have also been making this clear as we talk to people. 